you like this and want more, then check out the JarCast live stream every Tuesday night at 9 p.m. Central Time on the Jacob Anders Review YouTube channel, where you can also find movie reviews every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and Sunday. You can also listen to the entire podcast on all major podcasting platforms such as Spotify, Google, and iTunes. So if you prefer audio, whichever one is your preferred, check it out there. Once again, I really appreciate it and thanks for watching. And as always, stay sexy, YouTube. This is the JarCast episode 5. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I got quite a few things to talk about this week. Nothing crazy out there, but a bunch of little stories. One's kind of a big deal to me, I think. Uh, you guys might feel the same way. Got two trailers, as usual, to look at and take a little peek at. One of which, uh, there's a little story behind. It's kind of got a little, not controversy, but... It's uh, some weirdness going on with it, but we're going to take a look at that at the end of the show, but got a few things to go over before that, as usual, for this week's movie news. A lot more interesting stuff this week than there was last week. Okay, so, into this week's news. Uh, like I said, we got quite a few interesting little things here. They're nothing world-ending, but it's still pretty cool stuff, and the first thing we got I'm not sure how I feel about this. It could go one way or another, which I guess all things do. But whatever is, they're talking about making a uh, True Lies TV show. Um, all fans of True Lies have been clamoring for a True Lies sequel pretty much since the movie was made because True Lies was awesome. But now, apparently, it's happening. I guess there was another one in the works at Fox, I believe it said, a few years back. Now, apparently, it is moving forward at CBS. It says, uh, True Lies series Ruby, Ru Ruby, reboot is on its way. The latest film to TV series adaptation has just been picked up to pilot by CBS, with Burn Notice creator Matt Nix creating a new take on the 1994 Arnold Schwarzenegger, Jamie Lee Curtis action film True Lies. I, I don't know how I feel about this. Um... Because Schwarzenegger is not going to be in it. That's my understanding from reading this. It's all going to be all new, not characters necessarily per se. It might be, but it doesn't say they're necessarily having new characters, but they are having new actors. They're not going to have the same people playing it, which I mean, Schwarzenegger, he's, let's be real, Arnold's not going to do a TV show. He's that old school Hollywood. He, he's like, I want to do the movies. Um, and Jamie Lee Curtis, I mean, she might, but I don't, I don't see it. They're going to they're gonna recast it. And, I mean, that that's not necessarily... Of course, I think True Lies, I think Jamie Lee Curtis, uh, Arnold, and, and James Cameron, none of them are going to be there. But, you know, that doesn't mean... I'm not going to automatically write it off. But, man, we've seen this whole thing. The, the whole spy family, you know, one, like the husband and or wife is a spy and the other one doesn't know it kind of action comedy thing before. True Lies has not been the last one. There's been other movies made in the the mold of True Lies over the years, like, uh, what was it, Mr. and Mrs. Smith was kind of like, that was both of them kind of assassins, I think, against each other, assassin, CIA, or something like that. Um, there's the, the one with Tom Cruise, I think, was similar to that, but we've seen things like this before, but nobody could quite capture that magic like James Cameron, because James Cameron is, regardless of what you think about all his films, the man knows how to make good entertainment that people like to see. He knows how to take a simple premise like True Lies, not simple, but you know, a, a premise we've seen before, and give it new life. And I don't know if, the, I, I've not seen Burn Notice. I've, I've heard about it, I heard it was good, but I don't know how much Burn Notice has in in, in uh, common with True Lies. So I, that, that doesn't really give me a very good idea of what to expect from Matt Nix's True Lies. It does say that James Cameron is going to be acting as a an executive producer, which when it comes to executive producers, that could be a good thing. I mean, he could uh, he could he could be very hands on because it's not just a straight up producer; it's executive producer, so it's a level beyond below. He might just be there as a creative consultant here or there. I don't know. We don't know. Nobody knows as of right now. And he's kind of got his hands full with all those Avatar movies he's making and trying to get another Alita, fingers crossed, made and all that. So how hands-on is he going to be with the True Lies 
reboot TV show. I, I'd probably guess not real hands-on. He's probably going to come in and like say a bunch of stuff, but at the end of the day, I don't think he's going to be really that hands-on. So this isn't really going to be a James Cameron joint. And James Cameron was... James Cameron... Well, the mixture of James Cameron and Arnold Schwarzenegger is what really breathed light into this whole thing. Now, we do have... Uh, it's going to be directed by, and I'm sure he's going to have some other stuff to do with it, McG. McG is kind of polarizing as far as directors go. He did make the original... Not ori well, yeah, I guess the original Charlie's Angels movies, not the show. The ones with uh, Cameron Diaz and Lucy Liu and all them. He made those two movies... Those are really hit or miss. He made the Ter Terminator Salvation, which is one of those Terminator movies that when it came out, everybody hated it. And in, and years later, people started warming up to it a bit. They liked some of the ideas behind it. That's kind of me. When I saw it, I didn't love it, but I was like, I like some of the ideas they got. I like kind of where it's going. Execution was like, eh. I don't think Meg G's a terrible director. He's got some really good stuff under his belt. He did, uh, as far as TV shows, he was heavily involved in Natural. And I'm a big Supernatural fan, so that's really cool. What's this? I'm pretty sure, yeah, Supernatural, right? Probably should have looked that up before I started recording, but I'm pretty sure it was Supernatural that, that McG was involved with. He's involved with something. I want to say Supernatural. Either way, he's done some good TV, so maybe he'd be good. This might be good for him. I mean, it's like he's got that high-intensity kind of erratic kind of direct, directing style. I don't know if that's true lies, but, you know, it might make it exciting. What I'm trying to say, I mean, this this article doesn't give us a whole lot more beyond what I just said there. It just, I mean, it talks about how, you know, people are wondering, is this going to be, is this a good idea or not? I think people want it. People want a True Lies sequel. But at this point, I think this is the best we're going to get. Because I don't think Arnold and Jamie Lee Curtis are going to come back for a sequel. And if they did, it might seem a little forced at this point. Who knows? Maybe if they could get everybody back might i don't know but this is the best we're gonna get we're just gonna have to hope for the best i'm going to but you know what do you guys think you looking forward to a true lies tv show another thing about it too true lies was rated r and it's on cbs so this is not going to be a rated r show now true lies isn't like graphic violent but it does have some rated r shit in it and what i liked about the r rating for true lies while it wasn't a hard r it was kind of like they were free to do whatever they wanted. Some parts of the movie could have been in more or less any, you know, PG-13 flick. But every now and then they were free to go that extra mile. Here they won't be able to. That doesn't mean just because you're not R and you're PG-13 that you can't make a good entertaining show. But I don't know. This one of those, it's up in the air. You're taking, there's a lot of things they're changing here, which, you know, it's hard for fans such as myself to get on board with change, but I'm trying to remain optimistic. And uh, hopefully, when this thing comes out, I imagine probably in about a year, give or take, whatever, whenever they film it, because they've only ordered a pilot at this point. So if it gets picked up, we might see it in about a year. Who knows? Maybe even longer. But um, when we do see it, I'll check it out at least the first few episodes to see if it's going to be worth it. And I'm going to hope for the best. I'm, ca I'm cautiously optimistic, as I say a lot of the time, but hopefully they do true lies right. Next up in the news, we have uh, another one that I'm not 100% sure how I feel about. And that's going to be Hercules. And they're talking about remaking Hercules. But of course, in true Disney fashion, they are making it into a live action movie now there's a little bit of interesting stuff going here and not the fact that they're making or remaking hercules 1997's animated hercules into a live action film is not that's not surprising at all in fact it's kind of surprising they haven't done it yet uh knowing disney in the way that they're remaking all their old animated properties however what's interesting about it is joe and anthony russo of uh the, the Marvel fame, be most notably Endgame and uh, Infinity War, are the ones that are in charge of this thing. They will be directing this Hercules remake, or live-action remake, but that's not even the most interesting part. That, that gives me a little bit of hope, because... I think that Endgame at this point is a little overhyped. It was an enjoyable film. I really liked it. Very rousing when I saw it. It was a uh, really... <clears throat> just a, a great ending to that whole arc there. It does leave me to think, I don't know what the hell they're going to do moving forward. I, I don't know if they have the right, Marvel has the right traje trajectory moving forward from here. We will see. But 
Um, that's still up in the air. However, they they know how to make good movies. They made some good stuff, um, and I think that this, you know, yeah, they could make a good Hercules film. I mean, we really haven't had one since. Um, when? <laughs> uh, some would say the 1997 animated Hercules, but a live action Hercules. I don't know. Hercules in New York, maybe? Arnold Schwarzenegger, old school one? And that's really only because it was so bad it's good. So, yeah, a cool Hercules movie? Who knows? We'll see. But that's not the interesting part. As I mentioned, the interesting part is that they want to say, I'm going to read it straight from this article at film, slash film.com, sorry. And that is the Russo brothers have their cinematic universe. I'm sorry, the Russo brothers love their cinematic universes. Not only did Joe and Anthony Russo play a pivotal part in crafting Marvel Cinematic Universe, it seems the duo want to make a cinematic universe out of the upcoming Hercules live-action remake. What? What? How, how, I, I don't see it. I don't see it. They're saying that they see it. They're saying that um, the Russo brothers are producing oh, i'm sorry they're not directing they're producing the remake of the 1997 Amanda animated musical and gave an update on the live action version which they hope will spawn a decade's worth of stories a decade 10 fucking years so they're trying to do the avengers marvel mcu thing but with hercules i don't i mean okay uh it says that in a recent interview uh, Joe Russo gave an update, and he revealed it's still in early development stages with writer David Callahan, who's also writing the Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings movie, which we have yet to see, so we have no idea what that's going to be like, is set to turn in his first draft soon. And he talks about how the script's about to come in in about a week, so they probably got it by now, by now I'm sure. And he says that... Where is it? He says... he. Th it's in all this right here. I'm not going to go through it all. He ultimately says... Here it is. I'm sorry. The part that stands out is... Oh, I'm sorry. Our, our intention is to look at everything we do and think about how we can build it out. What can you do with that... I read that all messed up. Stop skipping around ads. Jesus, I hate this thing. Uh, how can you build it out? What can you do with this that expands it? Gives you different opportunities for storytelling in it. Adding that audiences want to see something really cool that they want to get lost in for decades. For a decade. I don't know. I don't. I mean, sure, in some cases. But I don't necessarily think every movie I go see, I want to get lost in for a fucking decade. I don't need every movie to be a universe. I don't need the MCU out of everything, and it really seems like that's what they're trying to do. I feel like this is kind of forced. Now, maybe they've seen a rough draft of the script, and they just really see something here. Uh-oh. I froze. Okay, sorry about that. <laughs> I don't know what happened there. That was weird. Okay, everything's cool. Maybe they saw an early draft of this thing, and they just really see something in it that we don't initially see right now. I mean, I, I don't know. We have no idea. I mean, I know what the story of Hercules is. So, I mean, I, I don't see it in that story that we know. Maybe they're gonna. They're obviously going to ex expand upon that. It's a remake of the 1997 story, though. So we've seen that. It's at least going to have things in common with the 1997 animated movie. And let's be real. That one, well, you may love it, and that's, that's fine. That's great. But it's not like the deepest story ever. It, it's a fairly basic, you know, 90s Disney animated film. Where are you going to get 10 fucking years of content from it? Because when you say that, I'm assuming you're meaning like a movie a year or at least a movie every two years. I mean, not like, oh, we make one now and in 10 years we make one. That's not a decade's worth. A decade's worth is like multiple movies over that decade. And I don't see that. I, I just don't see. I mean, they, they mentioned the Infinity Saga. I don't see the Hercules Saga. I mean, maybe you could get a sequel or two out of it, depending. But, but really, 10 years worth? I don't see that. 
Um, hopefully they, they, I mean, it, it also mentions down here, this is the guys who gave us Extraction, and apparently it is now the Extraction Cinematic Universe. I wasn't aware of that. Apparently there's, there's branch offs of Extraction. I must have missed that story somewhere. I don't know anything about that yet. I know they are working on a sequel. I don't, just because something has a sequel, I don't know if I would go as far as to call it, you know, that movie's universe. Yeah, it's that movie's universe, but are you really going to refer to it as the whatever universe because it has two fucking movies? No. I feel like you got to get a few movies under your belt. But either way, this is not a big, huge story because, like they said up here, it is still early in development. I just don't, this just seems like a stretch. It seems like they're reaching. It seems like they don't have, they couldn't find anything better to do, and they got hired, or they're at Disney, and Disney said, hey, make us another MCU. We want another long story, big, you know, universe. And they said, Hercules, why not? Hercules is sitting over there on the shelf. Nobody's remade that one yet. Nobody's attached. Go make that. And it just, I don't know if people would be interested in a Hercules universe. So, I mean, you guys tell me. Um, if you are just like the biggest, most hardcore Hercules fan ever in the world, we got good news for you because there's fucking Hercules universe coming. So you're going to be fucking hyped for this shit. I'm, I'm not. My voice just changed there when I said hyped. It went real high because I'm just kind of like, what the hell? Anyway, um, those of you that are into it, hey, there's something coming for you. Me, myself, I'm... I'm beyond cautiously optimistic. I mean, I, I try and remain optimistic for everything, but I just absolutely cannot see this. Cannot see this. But we're at least a, a couple of years out from this thing. I guess we'll make a determination when we get closer to time. Next up in line after Hercules, we have something I'm actually kind of excited about, and I will get this. I've talked about physical media before on this channel and about how I used to be really into it, and I used to buy tons of like DVDs and even Blu-rays and all that. And ever since 4K and streaming has gotten much better, I don't buy as, men as much physical media anymore. If I do, it's typically in 4K. And it has to be something I really, really love, something I really like. And this movie is one I've been wanting to get my hands on a great copy of. Now, this article is talking about the Blu-ray copy, but apparently there is going to be a 4K one as well. So any 4K aficionados out there, get ready, because I'm looking forward to this one. But I am a bit sad by this news as well, and that is Event Horizon is getting a collector's edition from Shout Factory, I believe it is, or Scream Factory, Shout Factory. Um, and they are known for taking some, Event Horizon is not super obscure, but taking some movies, some cult classics, if you will, and giving us some really great transfers and some really great discs. And Event Horizon's no different. This is a great disc. Um, they're saying they've done a great job with the transfer. I'm really looking forward to that. I really like this movie. Um, it, it's just it's one of those movies that grows on you every time you watch it. It's one of Paul W. S. Anderson's first movies, not his first. I believe it was his third movie after Shopping, Mortal Kombat, and then this. I can't. I think Soldier came after this. But um, either way, it's one of his early films before he got into the video game thing. Besides Mortal Kombat. And it's just a very unique movie. It's it's gory as all get out. However, it was even gorier. And even just, from what I understand, so bad that it was going to get like a hard X rating. Just crazy insane gory. And they were talking about how they wanted to reassemble all that footage and put it on here. For the first time ever, they wanted to put the original director's cut of Event Horizon, which is kind of like storied, you know, in the community. The people that know about Event Horizon, it's like everybody knows about that that fabled original cut that he put out there that the studio was like, fuck no, you're not putting this out. And uh, we were hoping to get it. They said they were working on it, but... Unfortunately, we're not. Um, it says that the Event Horizon Blu-ray won't have the missing footage, but it will include plenty of other special features. And it does look like they got a shit ton of great stuff. So if you're a fan of Event Horizon, there's going to be a lot of stuff, including some deleted scenes. But most of these deleted scenes, I'm sure we've probably already seen. There are a few that we've already seen, but not that fabled, missing, hardcore, insane footage from the movie. If you're familiar with Event Horizon, um, one of the things I know, there was a lot of stuff that was cut out of it, like a huge amount apparently, but the scenes where it shows like the, the, the kind of like hellscape devil, not devil, but like the, I don't know, demonic 
orgy scenes it shows them having that just flash up there real quick. They're almost subliminal. They're so quick. It's like, ah, 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 like that. Apparently, those were full fucking scenes that were shot, and they were just just but terrible like off not bad like terrible in a bad way but like so hardcore and gory the studio was like no no way in hell and the best he could do was get little flashes up there so uh we're not going to get to see all that whether this stuff still exists or not is really up in the air uh paul anderson paul ws anderson did say that he believes that it's probably lost. He said for a while that he thinks, because the, the movie came out before DVDs and all this, right before DVD, and it wasn't common practice for them to always hold on to old footage of movies. If it was unused, they they just get rid of it sometimes. Some of it they'd hold on to, but especially for a smaller movie like Event Horizon, it probably just got lost or got stored somewhere and wouldn't help properly. So there's a good chance it's all gone. He said there might be some VHS copies out there floating around, or or some like multiple copies and multiple different because he said he had to cut it a bunch of times before he could get it down to where they would give him the okay. So maybe you could like pick and choose and remaster and make this cut again. But he said he feels as this if as if as a whole this original cut is probably gone, and that's really unfortunate. I I don't fault them for it. They did come out early on and say hey. We're trying to, we, we want, this is what we want to do. But they never guaranteed it. They never promised it. They just promised that they were going to try to. And I appreciate the effort. Um, it kind of sucks if they were unable to do it. And he was probably, I don't know if Anderson was in, you know, working with them, but I'm sure they contacted him. If they didn't come up with it by now, they're probably not going to. We might get some little snippets here or there. But I doubt we're going to end up ever seeing this original version of Event Horizon, and that kind of sucks, um, because it sounds like it was just, like, real, just out there, by, by Anderson's own, like, by, in his own words, he said, uh, where is it, where is it, he, he, he flat out said that bits and pieces of the lost cut of Event Horizon turn up, like on different VHS tapes, there will be bits of a scene that are slightly different from earlier cuts, but I think the truth is, when we delivered the first cut to Paramount, they were just horrified by the movie. Whoops, it skipped. It was much darker and scarier than they ever thought it was going to be. An executive actually said to me, we're the studio that makes Star Trek. <laughs> as if somehow I was permissioning Star Trek as well. It wasn't bad enough that I had made this horrible movie. It wasn't just bad enough that I made a horrible movie, but I was shitting all over Star Trek. Um, so the movie ended up being trimmed a lot, and unfortunately, it was before DVD really popular, popularized, popularized, deleted scenes and things like that, so there was no initiative for studios, no, no incentive, I can't read tonight, no incentive for studios to keep that material. And that sucks. He also says down here that he added that he was pretty sure the lost footage was truly lost forever. And that, that, I mean, it's, I don't know, maybe it's because I have a soft spot in my heart for this movie. It, it's not perfect, but it is just a fun, unique, just crazy out there movie. And I really, I mean, it's, it's in line with something like Pandorum, I think is the name of it. That's another one, like a sci-fi kind of horror, like gory horror, like body horror almost. That's what it's like. That if you're if you're into that kind of thing, if you if you found enjoyment in that type of movie, that I actually feel like that movie was probably heavily inspired by Event Horizon. So if you haven't seen Event Horizon, this is a great chance to check it out because um, this will probably be the best it's ever looked, especially in 4K uh, film m movies that are shot on film, 35 millimeter film and other. Typically, if if mastered correctly, end up looking great. Because 35 millimeter film has so much data in it that you can take it and just really get a great 4K transfer from it if done properly. And it says that they did transfer it to uh, 4K. So if they did a good job with it, which they've done in the past, so there are other releases, this could be something great for fans. And if you've never seen Event for Event Horizon, even if this isn't the avenue you take, definitely check that movie out. It's a really, it's just a very unique fun good time but it is not for the even in its cut version that we ended up getting it's not for the weak 
stomached. I mean, it, it's still pretty, it's pretty violent and it's pretty out there. I mean, it's, is it scary? I mean, it has its moments, a few jump scares. But it is a very creepy movie, and I thought it was a great time. So I'm looking forward to this release, even though we're not getting the one that I was really looking forward to. And this is kind of like me and a lot of people are just finally accepting the fact that we're probably never going to get that. And that sucks, but there's nothing you can do about it. I mean, what can you do besides remake it? And God, please just don't do that. Just don't. Leave it the fuck alone. Just leave it alone. So next up is what I would consider the biggest story of the week for me at least. I mean, the, the Event Horizon one is is, is great. I'm, I'm looking forward to that. But this is the one that is the most interesting, the one that I, I can't say I'm going to necessarily talk about it as much because I really only got a few things to say about it. But it's the most exciting and the most kind of like somewhat out of left field, but at the same time kind of like how has this not already happened kind of situation. And that is a movie that's coming up here soon that I'm just wondering... I was actually like, how? I mean, if they were going to do it, how did it not already happen? But you know what? It's happening now, and that is, of course, if you guys have had your ear to the ground, Face Off 2. They're making Face Off again. So maybe it'll be Face On? I don't know. But they're making a direct sequel to John Woo's Face Off. And we're getting mixed reports on whether... Uh, John Travolta and Nicolas Cage will be in it, but it is going to be a direct sequel to Face Off. And this could be awesome. It could be great if Nicolas Cage is in it. <laughs> and even John Travolta, because he's kind of nutty out there too. They were just the right kind of nuts to put together. But as they're saying that um, actually the day that this broke uh, a day or two ago, uh, the day before the guy who's in charge of this whole thing put out a tweet and it was misinterpreted and he was saying that they were making a remake. They were remaking Face Off and everybody was kind of like, uh. but then he came up the next day and said, by the way, I'm just clarifying, we're not remaking it. He says here, uh, Adam Wingard, by the way, he's the guy who's in charge of, he's directing the new um, Kong versus, or uh, Godzilla versus King Kong. Godzilla vs. Kong, whatever the hell they're calling it. That's what he's directing. That's that's the kind of... So we see that, and we love it. We think it's awesome. That gives us some faith for Face Off. But um, he put out, after his initial tweet, he said, I would never reimagine or remake Face Off. It's, per it's a perfect action movie. Simon Barrett and I are writing a direct sequel. So they are currently in the process of writing it. So there's no, you know, nobody attached to it, officially at least, as of yet. So it is it's still in the very early stages, but I mean, this guy's in charge of one of the big movies of this year, so this is probably going to definitely be happening. And really, I'm cool with it. If they keep that kind of balls to the wall out there, reckless, abandoned, just nuts kind of atmosphere like the first one did, if they keep all that in this sequel, I'm down. I'm cool with it. But I really want them to have John Travolta and especially Nicolas Cage in this. And, of course, we don't know anything. Everybody's speculating about, will it be like his daughter who has to go and have her face taken off by a strange course of events or something like that because she's probably an adult by this point? Or it, what? what is this sequel going to entail? Is 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 Because, uh, spoiler alert, Nicolas Cage or Nicolas Cage's character dies in the end of the movie, and John Travolta, of course, the good guy in the movie, he, he survives... And uh, so how do you have Nicolas Cage come back if he's dead? People are like, oh, maybe it'll be in his head or or, or, or a whole, maybe his kid that looks just like him. I don't know <laughs> what they're going to do, but I hope, and they can do it. We're talking about a movie where they take fucking faces off people and put it on other people. And suddenly their bodies match and everything too. But so they could make it happen. I'd, I'd roll with it. It could be the most ridiculous thing in the world. He survived that harpoon through the fucking chest or whatever it was somehow. Or they kept him fro. I don't know. Maybe they kept him frozen. So uh, 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 John Travolta has to use his face again or something. But that still wouldn't be Nicolas Cage. Nicolas Cage would be in the movie. But maybe he does that and then... Like somehow in John Travolta's head, the 
Caster Troy, I think that was the name of Nicolas Cage's character, is is kind of like a dual kind of personalities in his head. I don't know what the hell they're going to do. But I just hope they do something, keep it a little bit wacky. Not too far out there, but out there in that perfect, just great, batshit crazy face-off kind of way. That's what I want to see. Uh, we're probably at least a year or two out from this movie. Unless they fast track it or something. I don't think this is one they're going to fast track. I think it'll do well. I think people will flock to it if done properly. But I don't think it's one that the studio is just like, you got to get this done by May or some shit like that. You know, I I think they're just kind of like, yeah, you know, make your thing, do it, and we'll promote it when it comes. And and hopefully it'll be a a big hit. John Woo, however, is, as far as right now, not involved in this film. He's not directing. He's not writing. Obviously, these guys are writing it. But he um, is... He who knows what'll happen in the future. Maybe he'll bring on a producer credit or something like that. I don't know. Um, at the moment, there are reports that are not they're they're not for sure. But who was it? Somebody was saying that that Nicholas Cage and and uh, Nicholas Cage and John Travolta's parts will be recast. Suppose supposedly. Um, but that's not substantiated. There's nobody who's, that's not a hundred percent. Like I said, they're just writing it right now. So who knows? I mean, if they're in the middle of writing it, how can you say that they're, they haven't even finished it? How can you say those characters or character, somebody's not going to come back if they don't though, if Nicolas Cage and John Travolta don't come back, I don't really see the point in making it, but, and I don't, I, I feel like someone or people who are fans enough of that property know that they're the ones that made that movie. Nicolas Cage and John Travolta. Cage and Travolta made Face Off what it was. Without them, it's, what is it? It's another corny B action movie that we've seen a lot of. So I don't see how they would make this movie without getting those guys involved somehow. So I I have a lot of faith, as somebody said earlier, I have a lot of faith in that they're going to make that happen. They're going to bring back Cage and Travolta, and we're going to get some great, crazy John Travolta and crazy Cage on screen again and taking faces off. Who knows? I don't know. Maybe it'll be like a crazy... They'll just have like multiple faces coming off and going on people. Just Everybody will be all fucking mixed up. I don't know. Um, I like... I mean, I like what I've seen of Godzilla versus Kong so far, but... Who, that's just a trailer. I don't know. <laughs> so hopefully this guy knows what he's doing, and we're going to end up with a good time here because, I mean, just make fa- just, just, just just do it justice. That's all I'm asking. That's all I'm asking. Just do face-off justice. It's just corny, cheesy, over-the-top, batshit crazy fun, and that's what we want more of. Don't reinvent the wheel. Just give us more of that and include John Travolta and Nicolas Cage. Next in line, uh, we're moving on along here. We just got two more quick things to go over. This next one is is just a, a short story. It's not really a story. I mean, they're they're talking about it, but it's it's kind of like we we've heard this before. I think it's kind of I, I don't know. I don't I don't agree with this mindset, but it is what it is. And we're talking about Black Widow. Black Widow has been delayed so many fucking times and pushed back and pushed back and pushed back. I'm pretty sure it was supposed to come out almost a year ago now. So it's been done for probably about a year. This movie's just sitting there. And this story is really just about uh, Paul Feig, the guy in charge of... No, not Paul Feig. Is it Paul Feig? Kevin Feig, I'm sorry. Or Kevin Feige. Kevin Paul Feig, somebody else. Kevin Feige, the guy in charge of Marvel, refusing to release this movie on Disney Plus on streaming. He says it is a it is a uh, a theatrical movie. You have to see it in theaters. It's going to be released in theaters. It's currently slated to come out May seventh. Uh, a lot of people are saying no, that ain't going to happen. I think it could come out on May seventh. I mean, there's a, there's theaters are open. Not a lot of them. Something like over 60% of theaters in the U.S. are closed, and they will probably still be closed come May 7th. So there's theaters, the other 40 or less percent theaters that are open that could put this movie out. It's just not going to make any money in theaters. And that's not the part. I get that, okay? They made this big summer Hollywood blockbuster. Traditionally speaking, the movie, they go to theaters, they make money there, then they go home. 
I get that that's the original way that this has been done, and it's been done for a long time. But we're in a new world now, man. We're in a world of streaming. We're in a world where the coronavirus forced us. It forced these companies to look at home media and streaming there and the options they had. And that's where everybody's headed. I mean, Disney itself is even headed there with a lot of its properties. The the It even says it here, Raya and the La- Last Dragon. That's an animated property. That's a new animated Disney movie. Uh, I talked about it here on, on the Jarcast a, f- a few episodes back. And that's Disney's bread and butter. I don't know, Marvel's probably its bread and butter now. But th- that's what Disney's known for is its animated projects. And this is a big budget, you know, theater, theatrical animated movie and they're bringing it to disney plus day one because it makes sense the theaters are not even if they opened every theater by may 7th everybody's not going to feel comfortable as a whole your hardcore fans will but not everybody's going to feel comfortable going out to a theater with a few hundred people to sit in this little room for two hours to watch Scarlett Johansson jump around as Black Widow. They're just not. They're not going to do that for any movie. Some people will, but not like before. If anything, take the approach that HBO or Warner is taking where you release it at home and in theaters. People that want to go see it in theaters that they don't want to subscribe to your service, they'll go to theaters to see it. Other people... Other people will just subscribe to your service. I mean, that would drive more people. A movie like this definitely would drive more people to your service, which is what they're really wanting. Disney is very focused on Disney Plus right now. They want it to work. And they want it to, they need, I think it's something like 250,000 or 250 million, something like, I think it's 250 million subscribers to break even or before it's somewhat profitable or something like that. I can't, I don't know all the the details of it and as of like here recently they're at 95 which is ahead of their projections but it's still a far cry from 250 fucking million people so they got a ways to go and this would really push people in that direction and it's just another case and i see this from the disney troop before disney said hey we're going to start releasing a bunch of stuff on disney plus day and date instead of theaters because you know the whole situation theaters are out for a while and we got to release this stuff and I think it was Soul that they were saying that they refused to release it on on uh, uh, VOD and, and on streaming platforms, or platform, I guess. They said, no, this is a theatrical... I remember this was a story. Their words were pretty much, this is a theatrical movie. This movie is has to be seen in theaters. Nowhere else. This is not a home video movie. Get out of that mindset, man, because that's not where we're at anymore. I mean, I love the theater experience. But even myself, I appreciate having that option. I would still go to the theater sometimes because it is an experience. But I enjoy the option of sitting at home. And I think a lot of people have gotten a much bigger taste of that here recently with new movies coming out. Universal's doing it to where they're going to be releasing movies in theaters. And a lot of them are day and date. But I think there's a mandate they have where they will release a movie in theaters and then something like less than two weeks later or something, or maybe it's... Right over two weeks later, everything's going to streaming services right after that. It's some kind of deal they have worked out with some of the theaters. Uh, Of course, Warner Brothers, everything is day and date, or at least everything's on HBO Max. I mean, look at the fucking HBO Max's summer lineup for the next, starting this month, or starting in March. Actually, it's already started. It's already started. Every week, they have a new big budget movie or, or a big movie coming out on there and it's working it's driving people to hbo max and it's making hbo max thrive and more stuff is coming to it and it's becoming a much more viable platform so disney get on it man stop being too good it's like they're saying black widow's too good mcu movies don't come to just straight to video they're too big for that they have to go to theaters Get the fuck over yourself, man. No, release that shit. Put it out. It's been fucking done. Because what's going to happen, because they also have, they they talk about it down here, where they have, they're coming up on, they're running out of time. Because they have this, uh, what was it? I I mentioned it earlier. The next in line is Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings. It's currently scheduled for July 9th. And the Eternals, November 5th. 
So you get two movies, which the MCU revolves mostly around the movies, but now you got these TV shows too. That's the problem. The TV shows work into the MCU as well. And what's going to happen is some of the stuff, the reveals, the lore, things like that, if this is structured like the previous MCU was, these movies are going to be talking about stuff that they have the shows and the movies set up to where they will come out in an order to where some of this stuff makes sense. They're going to keep pushing stuff back till they push themselves into a corner where they have to release this stuff or things aren't going to make sense in, within the continuity of their world, their universe that they're creating. Because I'm sure they're like, like WandaVision, everything that's going on in there, I have not watched it yet. I'm familiar with it. I would rather wait until it's all out and then make my verdict. I know it's very up in the air, hit or miss. As some people like it, some people don't. But it's at least interesting. But that that show is definitely going to have some stuff that has to do with the entire MCU. And it's going to affect stuff or other movies are going to affect it. We're going to run into a problem where one of these shows is supposed to affect the movie or vice versa. And then this thing, this effect is going to happen in one of these platforms. And the other one hadn't happened yet. And people are like, what the fuck is that? And it's not going to be as fluid as it was before. So they're going to have to release this stuff. Just release it on Disney+. Plus. I mean, you got people signing up in droves. This will drive them there even you know, more. You get more money out of a fucking subscription than you do a movie ticket. I mean, somebody pays one person, even if they took a few of them. If two people went to the movies, the actual movie ticket part you're getting, you're only getting, what, 15, 20 bucks? Let's call it 20 bucks. And then maybe a little bit more. At home, you're getting, how much is Disney Plus? 15 bucks, something like that, I don't know. You're getting $50 every month from them at that point. So, yeah, you're – and because that's – most people don't end it after that that first free month or free weeks or whatever. Just release it. I, I, I really don't like it when people are elitist and they act like they're above something and they're trying to act as if the MC move, move, MCU movies are just above going to home video. I think what it is is because their shows are. They had these – MCU shows that are showing up on Disney Plus right now, and it's kind of like, okay, you can watch those at home, but if you want to see the main event, you have to go. And they feel like maybe it will devalue like the movies if they go straight there, and I don't think that's the case. People want to watch your, your stuff. Put it the fuck out. I think Black Widow is a little bit different because it is a prequel. I don't know if it's going to tie into the new MCU as much as some of the other movies that are coming because it is more of a prequel. It's already happened and, you know, maybe it can actually hold out for a bit longer. But these other ones, I assume, are going to tie into what's coming. So they got to get off their asses and, and make something happen. I don't know. Uh, they, As of right now, though, they are saying that they're sticking to May 7th. But they are throwing out there that they said, you know, at the moment, it's still slated for May 7th. So that's not them saying hardcore staking the ground. It's Kevin Feige saying hardcore um, he's fighting for it to stay on May 7th. I say, okay, fine, dude. Release it on May 7th. Go ahead. See how much money this movie makes in movie theaters. Look at, ask Tenet about how that worked out for him. <laughs> it, it's, and that was probably the biggest movie to come out in theaters since all this shit went down. How did it go down for Tenet? Didn't work out too great, did it? No, Tenet had a real, Tenet did not make its money back in theaters so they should have just done like either a dual release or released it only at home or whatever something stop being hard-headed because it's always been that way or you're going to get left behind and that's just how it is in everything and that's no different here these hollywood types it's always been this way that's how it's going to continue to be no this shit well even if the the whole virus and all that and our way of life, which we're a ways away from getting back to any kind of normalcy for sure. If anybody thinks differently, you're insane. But if we do get back to that where stuff's open like regularly, that does not mean people are going to just flock, just go out of their houses and feel comfortable going and sitting with a whole bunch of people in a little cramped room for two hours. It's just not. Not in the way that they were before. It's going to be a while till we get back to that. But that's my take. I mean, anybody listening to this might think, shut the hell up, you don't know what you're talking about. Black Widow can only be seen in theaters. But me, myself, I'd be okay sitting at home and watching it cozy on my couch. So next up in line, our last story of the evening is really just kind of a fun story. Nothing groundbreaking, probably nothing about it either. Nothing will ever come of it. But I thought it was interesting. It was fun, especially with this particular movie that's coming out soon. The idea, the the 
the thought pro that this this was actually thought of, considered, bounced around, and I mean, you never know, could still happen. I don't look forward to it happening. I mean, I'd look forward to it happening, but I don't look for it to happen. But there's a possibility, slim, but a possibility that sometime in the future, and it has been officially talked about, we could get a Pacific Rim versus Godzilla versus King Kong crossover, <laughs> which is, I mean, just the, the, when I first read that right there, I thought, holy shit, I would see that. I would not need a trailer. I wouldn't need anything else to be said about it. You said fucking Pacific Rim, Godzilla, King Kong, one movie. I'm there, man. I'm there. Might end up being terrible, but the idea is amazing. That's a fucking awesome movie. That is so 19, like 60s, 70s Godzilla, like Toho Godzilla flick. That is more 1960s Toho Godzilla type of movie than anything I've seen since then. This is the mashup of all mashups. I would love to see that. That would be amazing. Now, um, much like I did, apparently, when that was thrown out there, when the uh, Stephen S. DeKnight, who was the director of the last Pacific Rim movie, Uprising, the one with John Boyega, which I didn't think was that bad. It wasn't as good as the first one. It was all right. It, it got trashed pretty good, though. And it, it was successful, but not successful enough to immediately greenlight a third movie. Uh, they are coming out with an animated show, but the third movie is still kind of up in the air. His idea was at the end of the third movie, he was going to leave the door open with some hints that these two universes could cross. And, I mean, I could definitely see it. But when fans started to apparently fantasize about the Jaegers, which is the giant robots that they use in Pacific Rim, fighting against King Kong and Godzilla, the knight came on and said, um, no. He said, yes, I want to cross Pacific Rim and Godzilla and Kong, but that doesn't necessarily mean Jaegers will be fighting Godzilla and Kong. Now, that all of a sudden people are like, well, what? What, what does that mean then? Does that mean that Godzilla and Kong will be fighting alongside the Jaegers? Some other bigger threat? Maybe. But also, it doesn't mention it here, and um, I'm sure people have said it, maybe the Jaegers aren't even a thing. Maybe it's Godzilla and Kong entering into the Pacific Rim, maybe from another rip or something, I don't know, and somehow fighting the kaiju from Pacific Rim. I think if you're going to meld these two together, the Jaegers got to be there because they are, I think the Jaegers and the kaiju got to be there because they are both what make Pacific Rim Pacific Rim. So I would think that they probably, it, whether the Jaegers would fight Kong and Godzilla or not, apparently not, but I think that they would definitely be there in some capacity. Some people even went as far as to say they wanted King Kong to jump into a ginormous Jaeger <laughs> and use it to fight like the biggest kaiju ever. And as insane and out there and crazy as that is, I'd pay to see it, man. I'd fucking pay to see that shit in a heartbeat. Now, they've already said that tonight is, he, he's pretty much, it's more of a fantasiful thing. This is like a thought he had, and he did actually, he or he still does, I suppose. There's probably going to be a third Pacific Rim in some way, form, shape, or fashion at some point, and I wouldn't be surprised if he at least leaves it open enough to where it could happen. Whether it'll be a direct reference to these movies or not, who knows. And, you know, after the Godzilla vs. Kong movie comes out, if it ends up just doing gangbusters and being huge and everybody loves it, that might be another avenue for them to have more Godzilla and Kong action and revitalize Pacific Rim as well. So this might actually become a more, like, believable scenario at that point. Who knows? And if the, if that's the case, I mean, I'm joking about this now, and even the article says that chances of this happening are very slim, and, you know, it was, yes, it was tossed around, but nothing anywhere far from concrete has, has happened here. But if that movie does great, the studio might come back to it and say, hey, you know what, that idea you was talking about, big-ass robots, Godzilla Kong, and some big-ass monsters... Let's move forward with that. Who knows? You know, Hollywood has greenlit weirder shit, that's for sure. Once again, that's about all this story is right there. It's just kind of a 
hey, ha ha, this, this seems like it could have been fun. You know, there's no, nothing concrete and there's nothing more to it. But the idea has been tossed around. So in five, six, seven years, if we hear about Pacific Rim versus Godzilla Kong, <laughs> then don't be surprised you heard it here first. Unless you already read about this somewhere else because I get all my news from other sources. So, <laughs> But I thought that that would be fun. It'd be a, a, a neat little mashup. Do I really think it would be a serious movie? I mean, I guess they'd play it serious, but uh, do I think this would be like the greatest movie ever made? You know, it could be. I don't think it would be the greatest movie ever made, but it could be the greatest viewing experience ever. That's for sure. This could be just insanely fun. Or it could be fucking terrible. Who knows? You never know in movies nowadays. But that's my thoughts. If I got any Pacific Rim and uh, Godzilla and or Kong fans, and better yet, all three, then who knows? There's a light at the end of the tunnel for that mashup you've always wanted could still happen. So that will do it for the news this week. Had a couple of other small stories, but nothing really worth going over. Running a little bit long here. want to jump right into the trailers. I do have two trailers I want to talk about this week. The first one we're going to look at here is for a little movie I actually hadn't heard about. And I have not seen this trailer, but I... I, I, I just the little blurb I read about it. And some people were talking about it. I said, well, that, that seems like it, it could be cool. And that's called it's a movie called Violation. And it's a revenge flick from what I could pick up. So, you know, I like those kind of movies. I recently did one, uh, watched a revenge flick called Ravage. Um, had some good aspects, but it also had some shortcomings. Hopefully, this is a, a Shudder original. It's going straight to Shudder. And I've had some good luck with Shudder flicks. They, they, uh, they're... They're doing a pretty good job over there with Shudder. If you're a horror fan, definitely get Shudder. It's worth getting. There's a lot of really cool shit they're putting on there. So here is the trailer for Violation. It's kind of got like a, a grungy look going for it. I miss you. I miss what we used to be like. These things always start out in the woods. <laughs> That's when Dad started calling you my white knight. Brainwashed her. He just doesn't do everything you say anymore. <laughs> oh. I <laughs> so cold. Is this going to be a thing like we're... Uh-oh. There's probably going to be some rape involved. Or all our friends going to get murdered or something? <laughs> I have to tell you something, and I don't want you to freak out. Why would I freak out? It's about Dylan, okay? Uh-oh. Don't get angry. What did Dylan do? It haunts your waking dreams. <laughs> I mean, everything, it looks like we're having a good a time. A knife. Apparently something really bad it's happened. A reality that is completely different from everyone else's. Where you're this saint who gets tricked into doing bad things. I'm liking how they're showing like these happy scenes, but you clearly have this like something really ominous going on in the background. Don't fucking touch me, mate. Don't fucking uh -oh. touch me. Get back in your car. You understand? Oh, you stop it. I feel like this is gonna be like some hardcore gory shit. That's it? It's okay. <laughs> I was expecting a little more, but I mean, I, I was, that, it's got me interested. I like that. I don't know, I, I get an idea. There's apparently these people out in the woods and there's something really ominous happening. Something clearly bad happened. I don't know if something bad happened is happening to everybody and like one person left over or maybe uh, maybe they're all out there having a good time and you know that's what we saw is the good time part and then like some bad people show up and do something to everybody take them all prisoner or something i don't know that's pretty cool because i like that because the movie kind of or the trailer kind of gives you it, it gave me an idea of you know how the the tone and the feel of the movie 
<clears throat> but it didn't like ruin anything. It didn't it didn't give away too much of the movie, but it did give me a very good idea of what the tone of this movie will be. And I like that. I really I think that's that's I like when trailers do that. They they don't give away too much. They they give you that really good idea of what the tone will be and I'm hooked. I mean, I, I have no clue <laughs> what's going on in that movie, but I did really like that kind of unnerving tone of something really bad has happened, is going to happen, or is happening while these other things are happening. I mean, there's not a lot more I can say about it. <laughs> I know it has something to do with revenge to a degree. Now, what the revenge is for, I don't know. Um, we'll have to find out, but I, I just know that from read, reading the heading that clued me into this new movie. It's definitely an indie flick or a smaller film, and those movies a lot of the times will take bigger risks, and they will do more, especially nowadays, they'll do more more creative things, and they're not afraid to get down and dirty and it did look like a gritty movie it looked like it was going to be grimy and dirty and gritty like we didn't necessarily see that in in the trailer itself but it just kind of like just just had that feel like when this movie gets raw it's going to be fucking raw hardcore and like bone crunching it's i feel like there's going to be some there's definitely gonna be some death and i feel like it's going to be really brutal so yeah i'm on board I'm on board with that. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I don't know when it's coming out. It didn't say. Um, but I'm, I'm definitely going to be looking forward to that and checking it out. I'm going to look more into it now that I've seen it. I went in totally blind to that. I, admittedly, I was expecting more. But I'm okay with that. Because now I'll go into the movie having no idea what to expect except that I like the tone of the trailer. And that's kind of refreshing to go in a movie without knowing anything at all. So, yeah, Violation. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. All right, so there's one more trailer I want to talk about after that one, and this is a, a little bit different. <clears throat> this one is actually a movie I've already seen, but it doesn't come out until next month. And the only reason I saw it was because the production company that originally was going to be, or the distribution company, rather, that was going to be releasing this film dropped it literally right before it was going to come out, and they sent me a copy of the movie, to, for review um, through the, the company I used to get all those things from. They sent me one. I requested it. They sent me one through it. Um, and actually, I think it was by the time I got the movie, or at least by the time I got around to watching it, they had already dropped it. So it was its release date was canceled. It was supposed to come out in, I believe it was the very end of last year or the very uh, pretty sure it was the end of last year like november or something like that i could be wrong but it's it's a few months back it was supposed to come out it got picked up by hulu though and now it is a hulu original and you couldn't find a trailer for this thing anywhere on on youtube at least there was just no trailers it was all gone it took everything off but i actually did a review of this movie some time ago back in a few months ago, you can find it on my channel, and I did actually enjoy this movie. It had a couple of little flaws here or there, but overall, it was a great premise. It was really fun, and just this is a definitely a movie I would recommend checking out. Um, I have not watched this trailer, but I've already seen the movie, so it doesn't matter. But I did want to kind of get this trailer out there to some of my viewership, so you guys could see, hey, this is you know a movie that might be worth checking out. And I know that the trailer was hard to find for a while. Now I think it's since Hulu picked it up and put the trailer out finally, it's all over the place. But if you're curious as to my specific or more in depth thoughts on this movie, check it out on my channel. I realize I haven't even said what the movie is yet. <laughs> that movie would be boss level. Um, and this is a really cool... The trailer that I originally saw for it made it seem very video game-esque kind of like. And it has some of those sensibilities, like those retro arcade game sensibilities in it. But it is not a video game movie, nor is it... It's got some video gamey kind of stuff to it, 
but it's it's its own movie. It's it's kind of a Groundhog Day end of or edge of tomorrow over the top action flick. But let's let's check this out real quick before um and we'll talk about it more here afterwards. But this this is the trailer for Boss Level. Hey Jake, can I get a large bottle of that by you? You know what? Make it two large bottles. Because tomorrow isn't guaranteed. You have no idea. I used to complain that every day felt the same. And now every day is the same. You'll see that scene Seriously. a lot in this movie. <laughs> Shoes, pants, <laughs> rip them, flip them. Okay, coffee anyone? I don't know how this is possible. This movie's pretty violent too, by the way. Repeating the same day. Sorry, pal. And as many times as I've seen <laughs> this happen to my apartment, I still can't help but think I'm never ever getting my security deposit back. <laughs> Wasn't always like this. I had a woman once. Look at you. Son, I love. Yeah, Naomi Watts is in it too. Now, she didn't have a very big role. She has an important role, but not a very big role. Over again, but no matter how hard I fight, I die every single day. This is. What if the ability to rewrite history was real? This is probably a better representation of the movie than the original trailer. This gives me. From when it was originally going to be released. Don't worry, son. I'll come back for you. Oh. How do I stop this, Gemma? It's not about stopping. Well. It's about restarting. Exactly. There's what a couple the of things I see here I don't like. Level. They have an army. Yeah, of course, Frank Grillo's in it, and Frank Grillo's just pretty fucking badass in everything he's in now. Someone's been the busiest little beaver. <laughs> that lady and him, their whole back and forth in this movie is pretty funny. I've been waiting for this for a long time. I told you it was over the top. Um, like I said, this is a movie that I've already seen, <laughs> so it's weird to be watching a trailer for a movie that I've, I've, not only have I seen it, I've seen it quite a while back, and I did a review of it and everything quite a while back, but it's a movie that most people haven't seen. A lot of people didn't even know existed until here recently, but it's, it, it's, it's a thing, and it just had a really weird, the, I, and I still don't know why, but it had that very unfortunate luck of being dropped by its distributor right there at the end. Now, I will say the original trailer that the previous distributor had that they when they were going to release it had more energy to it and that was more representative of the first third to half of the movie. It had the the first third to half of this movie has a very kinetic energy like frantic energy to it. But then it does kind of, after all that, it's kind of, it doesn't slow down. The movie is pretty high energy the whole time, but it, it starts to kind of work on its story a bit more after that. But the first, about third of the movie is just like high energy, like wow, like fucking methed out. Um, but it's fun. It is really fun. That's some of the best parts of the movie right there. Overall, the movie was really good. This trailer, I'll say it's, it's there's two things about it. First of all, the inter it, it's got more... I liked it, and if this was the only trailer I'd ever seen, I'd probably be like, oh, yeah, that's cool. And the other one played, like, real hard to, like, kind of video game tropes. The movie doesn't... It, it talks about them a little bit, but it's not as hardcore. Seeing the other trailer, you would have thought that it was more like a Scott Pilgrim versus the world kind of thing, and it's not that. It's not that at all. It is much more a um, high-concept Groundhog Day or Edge of Tomorrow with the whole repeating of the life, but a bit more animated, if you will. Um, and, and it has a, a definitely a, a level of comedy to it, too. It's not a flat-out comedy. It is an action movie, over-the-top, kind of crazy action. But it does have a, a very... lots of comedy to it. It, it, it. 
There's just definitely a sense of humor laying over everything in this film. Man, and I get that more in this trailer, I will say that. So I think this was a good representation of the movie. Now, there was two things that it showed that I didn't like because it gave away, it could potentially give away something in the movie that you're not supposed to know. And now it's hard for me to say that because I've already seen the movie. So when I saw those things, I was like, oh, they showed that. And uh, they are things in the movie they don't want you to know until certain parts that are later on in the movie and in seeing it in the trailer eagle-eyed viewers who haven't seen the movie might be like well, what was that and start to look into it more and it won't be as impactful to them um, maybe not once again maybe that's just me having already seen the movie i usually haven't seen a movie when i watch the trailer so i'm picking things out a little bit more here but yeah overall i'm uh, will i watch it again I, I would be willing to watch boss level again um, it was a fun movie. This is one movie that I will probably watch again with someone else to show it to them. Um, it's, it, it's a fun ride. I definitely recommend it to everybody, especially fans of action over the top kind of action comedy stuff. Check this one out. The ending I have noticed in my comments and things like that. And other people that have happened to have seen it is very divisive. Um, not the, of the traditional movie i'll go ahead and throw that out there now i didn't have a problem with the ending i liked it but i mean i was fine with it but there were people that had issues with the ending the way it ends but that's for the movie review go check out the movie review of boss level on my channel um like i said it's been a few months back that i put it out but you can definitely find it there and uh find out my thoughts on that but i definitely do recommend is a weird trailer reaction kind of thing because I've already seen the movie, so I'm trying to react to a trailer of a movie I've already seen, but whatever. I will say that if I hadn't seen the movie, I would say, yeah, I want to check that out. That looks like a good time, but seeing as how I have seen the movie, I'll say that does look like a good time. Check it out, and also, I know for a fact you should check it out because I've seen it already. I know it's a good time, so there it is. Boss level, trailer reaction. Check it out. All right, everybody, that was JarCast Episode 4. I really appreciate everybody coming by and watching and or listening to the show. Hope you enjoyed it. I'll be back here again per usual Tuesday night, every Tuesday night, doing the show live at 9 o'clock Central Time. That's 7 o'clock Pacific and 10 o'clock Eastern. If this sounds like something you want to get in on, come on by. We do some talking in the chat and just hang out for a while and then i edit it all together in this version you're seeing here and or hearing uh if you do prefer the audio version and you're not already listening to it check it out on all the major podcasting platforms such as google play spotify itunes all that stuff it's on all of them i think if it's not on one that you do prefer just shoot me a message on twitter or even on here on youtube and i'll make sure that i get it on there that's about all i got hope you guys enjoyed the trailers and the news and as usual i really appreciate it hit a like subscribe and i will see you guys next week peace we